Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to go over the synthesis of this interesting looking cyclopropane from an aldehyde as a starting material. So as always we are going to start with our retrosynthetic analysis. And the first thing that I'm seeing here is that my final product is a cyclopropane. So how do we make cyclopropanes? Probably the first method that comes to mind and the most common method is going to be the Siemens-Smith cyclopropanation. And an important thing to remember about that reaction is that the Siemens-Smith reaction is a concerted reaction, it has a concerted mechanism, which means that it is going to preserve the stereochemistry of the original alkene. That makes it a little bit easier for us to figure out what sort of alkene is our predecessor. Since our cyclopropane has a cis stereochemistry in our final product, that does mean that our alkene must also be a cis or a Z alkene, if you want to call it this way. Now, my next question is going to be, how are we going to make our Z alkene? Well, there are two different methods. First is a reduction of an alkyne with hydrogen over the uh, poisoned palladium, the Lindor's catalyst, that can give us the uh, cis alkene. And the the other one is going to be via the Wittig reaction. In this case, I'm seeing that my Wittig reaction here would have to use the aldehyde as a starting material, and that starting material is my actual starting material, so probably I should go with the Wittig reaction here. Another thing to keep in mind is that the non-stabilized elids, just like the one that we have in this case, gives us Z-alkenes, and that is precisely what we want in this reaction. And since we have reached our starting material, we can now put everything down into one synthetic scheme and see how the synthesis is going to look when we put it all together. The first step in the synthesis is going to be the creation of the elid. I will remind you that we are working with the non-stabilized elid, which which means that we are going to have to make it right before our Wittig reaction. Non-stabilized elites, they don't stay very well in a bottle if we want to keep them for the future use, so we always want to make them immediately before the reaction. In order to do that, we are going to take our corresponding alkyl halide, which in this case is going to be 1-bromopentane, uh, and we are going to treat it with triphenylphosphine, which is going to undergo a simple SN2 reaction, giving us a salt as a product. Then we are going to treat it with a powerful base, Typically, that's going to be butyl lithium. However, you can see examples with uh, sodium amide or maybe even sodium hydride or similar powerful bases, which is going to give us our corresponding elite after yanking the proton of the alpha position. Now, once we have our elid, we can do the Wittig reaction. For the Wittig reaction, we don't have any special conditions or anything of that sort. We're just going to get the elid that we have just created, and we're going to react it with our aldehyde. I'm going to do the shorter version of this mechanism, which gives me the oxophosphitan uh, intermediate right away, skipping the betaine intermediate. Some instructors like to show everything with the betaine, but for the sake of space and time here, I'm going to skip that middle point. Once we have our oxophosphitan, it's going to undergo decomposition, giving us our Z-alkene and triphenylphosphine oxide, which is our co-product, so we don't really care about this guy and we are going to wash it away during the workup. And now, once we have our alkene, the last part is the Siemens-Smith reaction, which is typically done by reacting the diiodomethane with zinc copper alloy, usually in the ultrasonic bath. That going to make a corresponding intermediate. This intermediate is often called a carbinoid, and it's essentially a molecule where zinc kind of inserts itself between carbon and iodine. As I've mentioned before, this is a concerted mechanism, so we are going to be adding our CH2 to our alkene in one step without any intermediates in the middle. And since the final product that we are getting here is a chiral molecule, we are going to get that plus the corresponding enantiomer because they attack by our carbonoid in the Siemens-Smith reaction can happen from either face of the molecule. And there we have it. So as you can see, this synthesis was very sweet and short for as long as you remember to use your Wittig reaction. Without that, this synthesis would have been way longer. 
So keep in mind that while using old reactions from your arsenal is a good thing, using some new toys that you pick up in your class when you are covering new topics is also a very powerful instrument for your synthetic toolset. So always try to incorporate new reactions once you have covered them in class and see how much time and steps it will save you in your synthesis. Now, what do you guys think about this synthesis? Can you come up with alternative strategies how to make our final product? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, hit that like button and leave me a comment below. Your likes and comments really help in promoting the channel and I really appreciate your support. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.